Yo, what is going on, guys? This is Gary from Run Amok MMA, and I just wanted to make a quick little video log uh, to document my thoughts on yesterday evening's uh, premiere of season four of the uh, Contender series by Dana White, streaming on ESPN Plus. So. Next time, I definitely want to get Lincoln in on this, but I thought I should go ahead and do this um, just to go ahead and get it out there. We'll, we'll try to do it for next week for sure and then probably essentially put up uh, small thought videos just based on uh, some of the big things that happen. Obviously, for those that haven't seen it and for those that are interested, uh, we had four fights, obviously four winners, uh, but we only had three contracts handed out. The first contract was handed out to Jordan Levitt. Uh, by the way, this article I'm reading from is uh, a pretty in-depth look at what happened uh, on MMA Junkie by Dan Tom. Check that out. Came out today as well. Uh, Jordan Levitt, you know, uh, just got his purple belt in jiu-jitsu. He's got a wrestling pedigree, uh, really smart guy. Came out with an arm triangle choke in round one against a uh, fellow uh, uh, contender series alumni, Luke Flores. I don't know why I said fellow. Uh, so he got his contract and then skip down. We had the standout star, Uros Medic, excuse me if I mispronounce that, uh, in the lightweight division who got a TKO in the first round against a Taekwondo specialist. This guy has been busting his ass for three years and he finally gets that big break he's been looking for so good for him really happy for that guy um and then uh dustin jacoby in the light heavyweight uh this guy has apparently fought in the ufc before he has been fighting for uh glory kickboxing uh over the past decade he's fought in multiple kickboxing organizations but glory kickboxing is probably the biggest one uh and then he defeated uh ty flores who is a uh, person with a wrestling background via unanimous decision. Um, so yeah, so that was a good fight. The previous fight was good and the Jordan Levitt fight was really good. I enjoyed all three of the fights. Uh, and I actually, scratch it, I enjoyed all the fights, but speaking of unanimous decisions, this is really the one I wanted to talk about. The fight between Jerome Rivera and Luis Rodriguez. This was probably the most controversial fight of the night. And this was the fight where these fighters did not receive a contract. And I guess I really wanted to talk about why it is that Jerome Rivera, despite winning, did not receive a contract. Now, obviously, we all know that just because you win uh, one of these fights on the Contender Series does not guarantee you a spot in the UFC. Um, basically, you're guaranteed a spot. Fix this. There we go. Basically, you're guaranteed a spot if you finish – if you get, if you just impress uh, Dana White, uh, impress you know pretty much everybody, um, but specifically Dana White, uh, this is what happened with Dustin Jacoby later in the night. Even though he you know he came up via unanimous decision and impressed, and it was he he deserved the victory. Uh, the controversy here is that Jerome Rivera beat out uh, Rodriguez despite probably not deserving to do so. He probably did. He outstruck him. And I'll explain. I'll, he outstruck him some 80, 80, 8,700 something strikes to uh, – it was eighty. It was like 87 leg kicks, 114 uh, strikes total, I believe. Can't, I, don't know, I don't think total, but basically he just outstruck the guy the entire time. Rodriguez – uh, was definitely the more aggressive of the two. Uh, he, you know, he was a big, uh, heavy-handed striker, um, and that is, and that is not to say that just because Rivera outstruck him, they did not both land uh, shots. I would say that Rodriguez was landing very effective shots, um, and the big story here is that Rodriguez controlled the majority of the fight. For roughly five minutes and ten seconds, Rodriguez was in the most control of the fight. And when it came to Rivera, he had maybe a minute of control in the fight, and that came from the first round after capitalizing off of a slip from Rodriguez and actually getting his back and uh, getting, uh, getting his back and attempting 
a rear naked choke pretty early on. But even with a body triangle locked onto Rodriguez, Rodriguez was, was still able to turn himself and face Rivera and really just kind of turn the tables at that point. And not to mention, he got five takedowns, five whole takedowns in the entire fight. Rivera was attempting takedowns left and right, but he didn't get a single one. And most of the time when it came to Rivera uh, initiating the takedown, Rodriguez was so skilled, he was able to counter the failed takedowns and get his own. And this really showed that while Rivera is a competent grappler, Rodriguez was probably more so. He had the higher wrestling IQ, as this article in particular puts it. Uh, and when it came, it came down to uh, one point in the second round where Rodriguez had taken the back of Rivera. Rivera was slipping out the back door and Rodriguez was able to lock his legs around the neck of Rivera. He was able to trap Rivera's arm. And in a way, he had a almost a Russian-style arm bar. And uh, if he had been able to extend himself, really belly out, extend himself, if, if he hadn't been pressed up against the cage, the cage was really the only thing preventing Rodriguez from extending and, and really completing the arm bar, then he would have had a really killer uh, submission uh, sunk in. Uh, but Rivera was able to fight through it. He was able to get out of it. But it seemed like at the end of every round, Rodriguez was on top. He finished every round on top of Rivera. But as you can see here, I'll highlight it. As you can see right here, the first round was the closest at 29-28. But then the last two rounds, arguably the most dominant rounds for Rodriguez, he scored uh, 27 in both of them. And Rivera scored 30. Now, I can understand the first round. The first round was very close. Um, but the issue with this is that when it comes to these second rounds right here it's almost a completely different fight based on these scores you would think that rivera completely washed out rodriguez and that's not to say that rodriguez or i'm sorry rivera didn't have his strengths like i mentioned as you can see he is the taller of the two gentlemen he was able to utilize his, his long reach. Leg kicks were probably the most effective for Rivera. His range was probably the, the most effective for him in this fight. As you can see, he's just got these really long, powerful legs. He was able to keep Rodriguez, who is obviously the shorter fighter at a uh, significant length. I um, wish I could zoom in on this, but I can't. But basically, it came down to the two going uh, tip for tap, trading a lot of strikes. Um, as you can see right here, uh, definitely the taller man has a significant reach advantage over uh, Rodriguez. And despite, you know, those advantages, Rodriguez is definitely the more experienced of the two. He's 10 and one uh, with Jerome being, I think eight and two now. Um, but yeah, they, they were just a lot of trading shots here. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's Rivera that walked away with the victory. So the question here is not necessarily why didn't he get the contract, but why did he win? This is a question I've been asking myself personally. Um, well, a lot of people, especially the commentating team, kind of broke it down as sometimes this is just what happens. And we've seen stuff like this happen, that a – dominant uh, the, uh, the fighter that had the more control and i think that was the key here for rodriguez as to why he should have won was that he was in control more and he got the he got the closest to a submission finish and really it never felt like rivera ever got close to that finish that he was looking for or that the judges were looking for or i'm sorry that dana white was looking for and unfortunately like i said it just it never really got 
to that point. And it really seemed a lot of the time that, I mean, I mean, just, just watching the fight, there were so many instances where Rivera's legs were literally pushed over his head by Rodriguez. Rodriguez was just in many ways, the more dominant fighter. But at the end of the, at, at the end of the day, Rivera did outstrike him. And I think that for a lot of judges, they look at those strikes and they look at those points that you get from those strikes and they tally that up. And for them, at the end of those rounds, that's what, at the end of the day, really, uh, I guess, sums it up for them. And when we talk about that uh, almost completed arm bar at the end of the second round or in the second round for Rodriguez, he didn't finish it. And I know that sucks because uh, in, early in round one, Rivera took the back. He didn't finish either. So are we just not going to count the five takedowns? Not just the five takedowns. The take that, the failed takedown attempts of Rivera reversed into successful takedowns. It's a very sticky situation. Uh, it definitely does not make a lot of sense to me. But at the end of the day, it's what happened. Am I happy for Rivera? I'm happy that he won. It sucks but it's incredibly understandable why he did not get the contract because in many ways to a lot of fans, especially Dana White, who was, who was very adamant that he did not agree with the judge's decision at all. He was, he, 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 he did not feel that Rivera earned the victory. Um, sad to say, but I definitely wanted Rivera to win. You know, I heard about his wife and his daughter and how he's just an up and comer trying to provide for his family. I relate to that a lot. And yeah, I was happy when he won, but I was also relieved that he did not get the contract because it's very clear he is not exactly ready for it. But the good news here is that Dana White definitely said that they will be considered in the future. So, that being said, I'll definitely check you guys later. See ya.